Yeah. Sacrifice and four color mid range. Now, yes. I've got, I mean, the desk we're talking about it, you know, which deck we think is a favorite going into this. And you know <laughs> what? I'm going to have to say Team Medium Pig because Yashan has just been an absolute force against these sacrifice strategies. And there's not that many ways to deal with it. Yeah. I, I totally agree. The one thing that uh, Yvonne has, what Monty was talking about, is those fatal pushes mm -hmm. in the main and stuff to deal with Yasharn. So I really like that list and that style for this matchup. But Brad has played a ton um, of this matchup. You know, this is probably the top two decks that uh, everyone was expecting. So definitely yeah. going to be ready uh, to play against it. Well, you mentioned it, like the top two decks of the historic format have been the Sacrifice uh, and the mid-range. So, yeah. you know, these players are prepared. This is no shocker or secret or, you know, it's not the Nine Lives deck like we saw yesterday. We no just kidding. don't have any answers for it. And some of the answers that we found from Kaladesh have come in the form of the Fatal Push and the Chandra Torture Defiance, which is in hand there, which Brad does have the Ether Gust for, but we'll have to find an answer for that eventually. Yeah, definitely an upgrade there as well. And we we heard, uh, you know, Riley say Brad is one of the best standard players of all time. And he's the second best magic player in his family, too. So really high accomplishments. <laughs> but, you know, this isn't standard here. So <laughs> it's not standard. Indeed, it is historic. And uh, we are missing a couple land drops here for Flock. Not finding the third land and the goose before it gets gusted away is going to create another food token before it goes bye-bye. Ooh, and that going on top with knowing that the land drop was missed here, with Brad having an Essence Scatter and Fatal Push, he's pretty happy to see that go on top instead of, let's say, drawing a land from Yvonne. Yeah, for sure. That's got to be really telling that there's not much else happening oh, yeah. uh, for Yvonne in hand at this, at this point, beyond the two cards that are revealed. Yeah, this is a great start here. And then we have Nissa wrapped up for next turn where you can Nissa untap, have Essence Scatter. Um, a, a huge play here. Nissa, who shakes the world, it's so weird that it combos so well with a, a ton of lands in this deck. Just having a green and blue land like Zagoth mm -hmm. Triome here is such a very good combo to be able to have interaction, interaction after you play the powerful Planeswalker. Who needs Planeswalkers when you have Cauldron Familiars? I mean, come on now, Corey. <laughs> I think Avon does, actually. I, I think Avon needs some help from a Planeswalker here real soon. <laughs> yeah, Planeswalker that he can't cast just yet as an Overgrown yeah. Tomb was the land draw return. So he's going to have to try and find some red sources ASAP to get Chandra Torture Defiance down on this battlefield. Yeah, this draw from Avon just is not it. It is not a, not a solid draw here. Kept the goose on top because... Um, he was missing red, but with that fatal push, it, it really made this game pretty difficult for him. Yeah, it's going to be really tough here. At least these little kitty cats can jump in the way of the Nissa who shakes the world lands. And at least his clock is not at like nine seconds. We had to call him <laughs> Avon Clock after yesterday when he gave us a heart attack uh, trying to call that match where he was down to like six seconds. That was stressful. Hey, six seconds, just like life total, is not zero, okay? That's didn't true. didn't need to panic. It was all fine. But uh, that's the thing that happens with uh, these Jun Sacrifice decks at some points. You know, there's just so many clicks per turn, especially if you get your Witch's Ovens out, if you get your Priest of Forgotten Gods out, if you have Mayhem Devil down. You know, you have yeah. to, be, yeah, your clicks per second have to be like <laughs> blisteringly fast. No kidding. And your brain has to be moving really fast. And he's playing a very tough deck in standard, Demir Rogues. But interesting yeah, so thing not I want to. the clicks there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One thing I want to point out here is we see Brad not go to untap Zago Trium here. Really heads up play just knowing that Fatal Push is one of the cards that even if Brad, uh, if there was a creature that Brad could Essence Scatter, Avon could always just Fatal Push and then move mm -hmm. to second main phase and then play that creature. So a heads up play to not give away his Zago Trium here and just give away a Swamp. Yeah, it's been such an important card, especially being the only uh, dual color land or the tricolor land, um, mm. able to uh, get that benefit from Nissa. Yeah. All right, so Fatal Push off the top here. We have a second copy of Nissa. Two Fatal Pushes in hand, though. This card yeah. is brutal against these lands. It really is, just taking them out one at a time here. Now, Brad has a lot of options. We can either... 
And one thing that Brad has never really been afraid to do here is float some mana, Nissa untap, and then play a second Nissa to really crank up the heat here. Mm -hmm. um, you can also s cycle uh, the Triome to try to find something else here. With five mana floating, I think I know what uh, direction Brad's heading in. Yep, I think we're going to see Nissa who shakes the world times two. Come on down. And uh, like you said, just apply some pressure, but he's going to get a little bit punished here for it with these two fatal push in hand here for Yvonne Flock. Yeah, exactly. It's like me and this Brad Nelson fella are kind of connected here with the plays we're making. <laughs> now, leading up to the tournament, were you uh, shadowing Brad at all, seeing how his progress was going, how his preparation? You know, I usually do. Me and Brad have worked together for so long uh, for Pro Tours and stuff. But this time I decided to go with a different testing group to really just gain different stories from other players. So I did mm -hmm. not work with Brad on this one. I worked with uh, Kai, Huey, Reed Duke, that, uh, that testing team. All right. Yeah. So one forest down. And Darth the Triumph down on the battlefield. Midnight Reapers, the draw for Flock. Still no red mana to speak of. So these cats are putting in... Some overtime work here. Yeah, and that looks like a juicy essence scatter target here. And Avon this time doesn't have that fourth land where we could fatal push the island and then move to second main phase. So it's probably just going to be walking right into this one. Walking right into it, indeed. Essence scatter takes care of the powerful card draw engine in this deck, leaving just the two cauldron familiars and a couple of food tokens down on the battlefield here for Flock. Yeah, now we see Flock uh, debating whether or not to just go face and ignore this Nissa. Say, you know what? I am never catching this Nissa. Mm. Or if you think that you can take it down in some way. And either way, it looked pretty tough to take down Nissa, but we'll see. Overgrown Tomb is the draw. Brad Nelson just working with one fatal push and the Nissa who shakes the world, the powerful planeswalker that uh, causes many aggressive decks. Very many gray hairs. Yeah, a lot of headache, that's for sure. And we saw a little uh, head shake from Brad. Brad is definitely a player with uh, these style of tournaments that wears his emotion on his sleeve. Cool, calm, and collected whenever, uh, you know, your opponent could get a read off of you. But definitely want, had a head shake there, looking for something big like Hydroid Crisis, Uro, something like that to really close out this game. Yeah. Mayhem Devil was a draw there for Flock. It just still cannot cast these red cards in hand. And uh, passes the turn back, and the draw step is going to fatal push away this overgrown tomb. And again, just finding lands is bread. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's not a bad thing if you're, uh, you know, losing lands to fatal pushes left, right, and center. <laughs> yeah, if all your lands are getting uh, uh, Spartan kicked as uh, the art and <laughs> fatal push, you got to keep drawing them, that's for sure. But yeah, just an awkward draw from Yvonne. You know, the keep was perfectly fine. No fault to that whatsoever. Um, but just not finding red mana here. When red mana for Mayhem Devil can really start to do some things. We have the Fatal Push whenever Revolt... There we go. That's the jelly. <laughs> that is indeed the jellyfish. <laughs> All here right. Here's a spot that it gets really interesting, Ailey. I, mm -hmm. I always wonder, you know, exactly what to do. You want to max out on Krasis here, um, but it's do you float mana um, right now, cast the Krasis, then untap and get an attack in? I would think Brad is probably going to attack first and then float everything, tap one of these uh, green triomes, untap with Nyssa, and just max out on Krasis at this point. Like... You have to be a little wary of claim the firstborn. I'm actually yeah. not 100% if Havan even plays this. It doesn't look like he does. It looks like he's just playing this. The only instance in the deck are fatal pushes. So, Yeah, so no claim and deciding to play fatal push instead to give yourself a better card against Yasharn. That's all that screams to me. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to pay off in this matchup in some regards because taking Uro, taking Crisis uh, with Claim the Firstborn is still quite good. It is at that as we're about to see a big old Hydroid Crisis hit the battlefield, refill the hand here and uh, gain Brad a few extra life points. Yeah, and with no claims, you got to think that this top deck was just, uh, you know, going to be lights out here or make it really tough. Uh, for Yvonne here. All 
right, let's go. Big fishy time. It's going to be a 7-7 seven, seven crisis. Yeah, and the nice thing about uh, this open deckless tournament, Brad looks over and she's like, okay, I want to make sure there's no claims. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Max out. <laughs> my goodness me. How many lands has he drawn? That's got to be frustrating. <laughs> a little bit, but Brad, Ooh, uh, not hello. too frustrated uh, at this point in the game, I imagine. This is looking pretty good. This is a very good draw. Trail of yeah, Crumbs probably. now, two cats in the graveyard, able to bring them back, sacrifice a food token, pay the one, and go digging for some permanence on top of the library. Please, could I find a red land, says Ivan Flox at the <laughs> library. Yeah, right on time to find uh, another red card there. <laughs> Mayhem Devil, all right. Cauldron Familiar number two, what you got? At this point, I'm pretty sure it's too late, as Ivan Flock yeah. is just going to scoop him on up, down to nine. Way too many lands to deal with there, and just yeah. too much pressure from Brad Nelson's side of things. We're going to take a very short commercial break, but when we come back, we will jump into sideboarding with the players as they get into game number two. Welcome back to coverage of the Zenikar Rising Championship. We are joining Brad Nelson and Ivan Flock in sideboarding as they get ready for game number two. It's John Sacrifice versus Four Color Midrange. Now, Corey, talk us through sideboarding. Still can't believe Brad sets his uh, sideboarding up like this. This still just blows my mind. But as far as the <laughs> cards that are coming in here, the big ones to me are maxing out on Aethergust. Card is phenomenal here. And Yasharn. Brad goes up to four of what we're calling now medium pig, I guess. Mm -hmm. that, that makes sense. That makes sense. There is a, there is a bigger one out there. Um, but then from Avon's side, it's pretty interesting to see how many fatal pushes that he was planning to leave in. Goes with zero because Avon does go up to four Noxious Grass to be able to deal with Yasharn. And fatal push isn't that great like we saw last game. Sure, you were picking apart these lands, but that is just a Band-Aid. And if you're yeah. not ahead on the battlefield, or at least at parity, then that's not that big of a deal. But if we had... If those fatal pushes were noxious grass, Nissa would have never wreaked havoc on that game, and Avon still probably would have won, even though his draw wasn't that great. I see an interesting card uh, being brought in here for Ivan Flock in Bolas' Citadel. Tell me a little bit about that Whoa. inclusion. Well, that just screams to me that Aether Gust doesn't target that card. <laughs> <laughs> that just seems like a nice thing to kind of pivot if you can set up a game where you Thoughtseize, 
take these negates. Brad brought in two negates here, probably for that exact card. Plus, it's fine, you know, hitting a Noxious Grasp. If you can go Nissa, untap on a breeding pool and negate a Noxious Grasp for your Nissa, that puts you in a pretty good situation. But yeah, that's just kind of a one get you card if you expect a lot of Aether Gusts are in uh, Brad Nelson's hand. Another interesting card I wanted to highlight is this Doom Whisperer. We haven't seen this card, and it was an absolute powerhouse in the uh, Guilds of Ravnica or Ravnica Legion's draft, whichever one it was uh, a part of. Yeah. yeah what do you yeah, think of when, that one? I love this one. This is such a Brad Nelson card, if I've ever seen one. He loves <laughs> Doom Whisperer. And I was like, Brad, what are you doing with that card in your sideboard? It costs five mana. Historic, sometimes you can die on turn three. You got to tell me about it. And he's like... Dude, think about it in the mirror. You can't Aether Gust it. You can't Fatal Push it. And it digs you to put Uro into your graveyard and sets up your next draw. I'm like, oh. That makes sense. Yeah, Brad is really good at finding these like really niche cards that people kind of forgot about, but that serve a role. It, it's always logged into the back of his brain. He looks at so many deck lists when it comes to standard and just constructed in general that he keeps those kind of silver bullet cards in the back of his head and, you know, spices them on in deck lists whenever he gets a chance. <laughs> we'll be curious to see if that card does play a part in this as we take a look at the opening hands here. Brad Nelson mulliganing to six. Just deliberating over what to send back, either to an extinction event or this negate. On the other side of things, though, we've got the Jun Sack starting off with a really good one drop there in the Gilded Goose. Got an oven, and importantly, have ways to make red mana this time around. So yes, oh. Ailey, I'm excited. I don't know if it's going to play out this way, but if Brad has the foresight that maybe that one Chandra is in Avon's hand, he's probably going to want to, you know, leave an untapped land here. Um, and then the one cool interaction you have against Chandra with Aethergust is <laughs> normally you think like, ah, Aethergust, that spell, get it out of here. No, you wait until they tick up with the plus ability and then you aether gust it and then chandra exiles itself oh. exiles yourself yeah it's spicy oh my goodness we'll see uh, if that I'm, happens but i am looking forward to seeing that uh, I mean, that's the only play that devon can make this turn is getting the chandra torture to find down so here comes the powerful planeswalker the ether gust is available to brad nelson but let's and, see it resolve. And then the next level game, we'll see if Avon just doesn't activate it, just knowing that that could be done. Nope, oh, got him. Got him. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm so glad this happened. It's such a cool interaction that may, Chandra was so dominant uh, in her time of, of standard, but mm -hmm. Aethergust was never around. And that was the one thing that I thought that would probably contain Chandra Torch of Defiance. And yeah. this interaction here is, is the really brutal one. Yep. Take two. You're going down. <laughs> <So. laughs> Yeah. Chandra going to the bottom of the library instead of the top, exiling, um, I think there was a land that went away instead. But yeah, such yeah. a cool interaction there. And, you know, having the wherewithal to know, all right, chances are we're plusing. Unless there's something for two red in hand, chances are we're going for the other plus one. And uh, yeah, just exiling, getting rid of that planeswalker. Clear yeah. away for big pig. Sorry, medium pig. Medium pig. Yep, medium exactly. Pig. Exactly. Respect. Respect the bacon. <laughs> Respect it. Now you got me hungry. Dang oh, it. I'm sorry. Almost lunchtime. Almost, almost. <laughs> so now the pressure is really on Avon here. The top of the deck, you really want something like Trail of Crumbs. Corvald would be a, a big one. Just something that impacts the battlefield with some longevity here. Let <laughs> me mm, Marsh ain't it. That is a very landy hand. Yeah, that's about the opposite of uh, exactly what you want there. There's that powerful dragon that Avon was hoping to see uh, into his hand. Alas, Corvald is uh, fashionably late, as all <laughs> dragon nobles are. <laughs> oh yeah, oh. you you hang out with a lot of dragon nobles and know their um, their timing. Fashionably late, yes. Well, they've never okay. arrived, so my my theory is correct. That's, okay, they're just yep. always late. That checks out. Mm -hmm. Here we comes your sure an implacable earth. <laughs> We didn't have the, the mana to actually cast it last turn since that food mm -hmm. was taken away, but, you know, still. Yeah, I still would like to draw it. You know, you have the land to do all these powerful things, and uh, mm -hmm. Kitty Cat, you're good. You're, you know, we're going to apply some pressure here to the life total of Brad Nelson, but 
you're not the uh, the game ending Corvold that we'd love to see. Exactly, and I want to bring attention to that uh, Yasharn ability. You know that really shuts down the sacrifice it does. Um, stuff here from Avon. So even though the cat with an oven normally pretty good, mm -hmm. not you're so right good that. here. And now we have the the what the cool kids are saying these days: the Splinter Twin combo of Nissa and a Zagoth Triome to be able to combo and have one of these interactive spells of Eliminate or Aether Gust. Um, so be pretty tough to Maybe. not want to go for it but right now brad has noxious grasp on his mind because you can kill it in response just weighing yeah. the pros and cons here any consideration for an extinction event there not really with yasharn having pretty much a stranglehold on this and mm -hmm. you, you you see the really conservative play brad is trying to make here just saying well there's got to be removal in yvonne's hand otherwise what what did he either keep or what else could it be, right? You would have played anything else that isn't a removal. Little does Brad know that Avon is just bricking draw after draw here. And for seven points of damage here, will one of these creatures jump in the way of these powerful threats from Brad Nelson's side of the battlefield? Man, this is such a rough spot to be in for Flock. He really needed that Chandra around to deal with this big pig. Yeah, so brutal. Right now, step number one, I think, has to be get Noxious Grasp into your hand. Uh, if you're Von Flock, and then start drawing Oof. gas, but or just more overgrown tombs. Unfortunately. Oh, no. This is terrible for Yvonne. Yep. You got to feel for him. Like, this deck, it usually does pretty well filtering through the library with Trail of Crumbs, but mm -hmm. the card has just shown up either too late or not at all. Yeah, really just awkward draws um, from Avon. Both hands that he kept were good hands. This was not a, a situation that we we're going to look back on and be like, oh, Avon really shouldn't have kept that hand. They were both super mm. good. I would have kept both of them. Yep. The top of the deck was just so mean, either no lands or all lands, and there's just nothing you can do sometimes. That's magic. Yeah, and unfortunately, Flock doesn't have the uh, luxury of turning these lands into powerful 3-3s three that can just swing in you know, at will of, of yeah. uh, Nyssa who shakes the world. Yeah, and at this point, even Noxious Grasp to like either unlock Cauldron Familiar or stop the Nyssa, it, it just doesn't matter at this point. Mm -mm. Goose is doing its best to make some food, but not even that can be sacrificed, I don't think, to with your shine down on the battlefield. Yeah, I think you're right. Mayhem Devil? Mm. Okay. Sure, that's not going to do it. Nope. <laughs> that's going to be game. Brad Nelson picking up a clean 2-0 against Ivan Flock, flooding out there terribly, but nevertheless, the victory goes to the yeah. four-color midrange.